If After Effects is doing something that you didn't expect or something that you didn't respect, these might help you out. Okay, we've got this layer and we want to animate its position. So let's add a few keyframes and drag it around our composition. And After Effects has decided that our path should follow this arc. Now, sometimes that can be okay, but it's best that we decide that for ourselves. And what if we wanted a straight path? So to fix that, we can select these keyframes, right click, choose keyframe interpolation, and on spatial interpolation, change that to linear and hit okay. Now our layer moves straight between those points. And to make that the default setting, go up to edit, preferences general and choose default spatial interpolation to linear. If we want our object to move in an arc, we can select our convert vertex tool, drag on the vertices, and we've got our own arcing motion path. Now having audio bezier on by default can also add unexpected motion between two keyframes in the same position. These two middle keyframes here are in the same position, but because After Effects is trying to make a smooth motion between them and there's really no motion to be had, it adds this little arcing motion and creates a little bump in your animation without any warning. So best to stick to linear. Okay, here we've got a shape layer and we're animating its path property with two keyframes, going from a square to a trapezoid. But if we animate it, it looks like this. That is not what we want. And this is all happening because of the first vertex. Now the first vertex is the point or the vertex that was drawn first in our shape. Now we can tell the top right is our first vertex because it has an extra square that appears around it. And in our trapezoid that appears on the bottom left. So in the animation process, this point is going from here to the bottom left down here. And all the other vertices are doing the same, which essentially is flipping our animation in the middle to get them to opposite points of our second shape. And because we want a smooth animation, we want this vertex in as similar a position in the first and second shape as possible. So to do that, we can go to the top right in our trapezoid, select that vertex and right click, mask and then shape path and set first vertex. And now we have a much smoother and more expected animation. Here we're going to draw a new shape with our pen tool. But when we create our new shape, our anchor point is in the middle of our composition. So if we want to rotate our shape, it will rotate around that point, which we don't want. And to get that to the middle of our shape, we need to use the pan behind or anchor point tool and drag it into place. But we can make the anchor point appear in the center by default by going to edit preferences, general, and select center anchor point in new shape layers because the center is where we want it 95% of the time. All right, we've got this square and we want to add a mask to it. So we're gonna select our pen tool. And when we try to draw a mask, it just draws another shape. It keeps drawing shapes and we don't want that. So we need to be aware of these two options up here. On the left, it says tool create shape and on the right tool creates mask. So if we toggle the right one on, the next thing we draw will be a mask. And this also works for all other shape tools as well. Sometimes you might be selecting layers, but it's not showing what shape you've selected in the composition window. It's only showing the anchor point and the bounding box. So what's happened here is that this has been unselected. Toggle masks and shape path visibility. So if we hit that, and now it brings back what shapes are actually in our layers. And we have a much better idea of what we're selecting. Now, sometimes you might find in your timeline that there are a bunch of columns that are missing. Now, all we need to do to bring those back is to select these three icons down the bottom here, left for the layer switches, the middle for the transfer controls pane, and the one on the right, which gives us all our time codes. I generally tend to keep that off though. Okay, we can see we've got three shapes in our composition window. We can select them all and tell that they're on different layers, but there's only one layer visible in our timeline. So where are the others? They have been shied. And you can view shied layers by clicking this icon, which is this trap looking behind a wall. And here are our other layers, and we can set whether they're shy or not by toggling this switch down here. Often layers are made shy so that they can be easily hidden and unhidden. Very handy once your timeline starts getting full up with a lot of layers in certain projects. And this is often seen in templates where if something doesn't need to be edited, it is locked and then shied away so no one can touch it. So it's out of sight and out of mind. Okay, we've got a bunch of elements in this composition that we want to animate and we're moving things around and then suddenly we're in this view. Where has everything gone? Well, we happen to have accidentally double clicked our logo either in the composition or in the timeline. But if we click our composition view back over here, we can see our composition. Now this won't happen if you double click on any shape layers or any compositions, but if you double click on any footage or any image, it will open up just on its own. Okay, we have imported a vector file of our logo because we want to scale it up and not lose any quality. But when we do scale it up, it gets all pixelated. What's the deal? Well, we need to check this box here, which is continually rasterize. And as soon as we do, our vector is nice and sharp and it will keep that sharpness even if we scale it up infinitely. 
Okay, we've got this shape layer and we want to move some of its vertices. But when we click on it, they are not visible and we can't edit them. So we can do two things. We can either double click and now we can view them and then we can click on anyone to edit it. Or with our layer selected, we can switch to our pen tool and edit from there. Now from that point, if you accidentally double click and select everything, we will need to deselect it by clicking elsewhere and then selecting it to start again. If you're finding some of these fixes helpful, please give this video a like. It will make me very happy. And that'll help YouTube show this video to any other people using After Effects about to smash their head into their screen in frustration. Okay, we have got a gradient fill on a shape layer and there is this very handy bar here where we can set where the gradient starts and where the gradient ends. But if we select off that shape and want to come back to edit it, it is nowhere to be found. Now we can get it back by clicking on that gradient fill up here and then without even doing anything, clicking OK, and it has triumphantly returned. And if we lose it again, all we need to do is select a shape from the contents in our timeline and that will reveal it as well. Okay, we want to use this rectangle as a map for our star layer. A great way to do that is to add the set matte effect to our star. And we want to take the matte from a layer to our rectangle. And as soon as we do that, we can see that this is not what we were expecting at all. This is because our layers are different sizes with different aspect ratios. So to make the set matte look like we expect, both layers need to be set to continually rasterize, like we did with our vector logo earlier. And as soon as we do that, we get the result we want. And the rectangle, of course, is already continually rasterized because it is a shape layer and that is selected by default. And draw a mask over the bottom half using our rectangle tool, making sure tool creates mask is selected. That isn't applying over to our mat on our star layer. Our star layer is still visible in the areas that we had masked out. But all we need to do to fix that is change this setting up here from take mat from layer. We want to change this to effects and masks. So this takes into account all the masks and all the effects that have been applied to our map layer. Okay, we have got a simple animation here. It is 1080p and just 10 seconds long, a small animation. But if we render it with the default settings, this file is almost one and a half gigabytes. That is massive. And that is because the default render output format is lossless. So it's essentially as big as possible with zero compression. Now, most of the time we don't need nor want that. Now there are a whole bunch of different formats that you might want to explore your files for different reasons. I won't go into all of them, but 99% of the time I only use three different ones. ProRes 422, ProRes 4444, or H.264. So from the render queue, we can click on the output module and instead of the format being AVI, change that to QuickTime, which will give it a .mov container. And then to change the codec, we go to format options, choose the video codec from here. And here we can choose ProRes 422, HQ if we like, or quad four if you have a transparent background that you want to keep in the export. Hit okay, okay again, and then render. Now you can also use Adobe Media Encoder to render your scene. Under composition, and add to Adobe Media Encoder queue. This will open up Adobe Media Encoder, which may take a minute. And here on the right, we have our queue and we can change some settings. Here mine is set to the last use, which is H.264, which you can select from this drop down menu. And this codec is a great balance for the smallest possible file size with very little noticeable compression. All the videos that I upload to the web, Instagram, YouTube, use this codec. Then if we hit the green play here, that will render or encode. And we can see from our rendered files, both the ProRes versions rendered around 35 megabytes and H.264 under three megabytes. And there's barely any noticeable compression in it at all. Okay, now the next one is a strange one. Sometimes pressing the space bar won't preview your animation. And if that won't play your animation, but you can preview it with a play button up here, there's something you can do to fix it. Now, I don't know why this happens or why this fixes it, but if we go to edit preferences and audio hardware and I swap my default output device, hit okay, and then swap it back again, that fixes it 99% of the time. Now this one seems a bit like witchcraft to me. I don't know why this is linked with audio hardware, but I swear it's not a placebo. So try it if you get stuck. Now, sometimes when you're importing a file, let's say this logo here, in our project timeline, it has a slightly different icon. And when we drag it into our comp, it has a very short length of only a few frames and it seems to make no sense. Now, this is because we accidentally imported this as an image sequence. So if we go to our import window, we can see that when we select some files, it brings up some sequence options and it auto checks PNG sequence. Now this is because After Effects assumes we want to import this file as a series of frames because it is surrounded by some other files with increasing numbers in its name. So this one is 01, we have 02, 03, and After Effects is thinking, hey, maybe they want to import this as frames in an animation. But if we just want to import the image, uncheck this and hit import. And now it behaves like any image file. 
Now, sometimes After Effects projects get corrupted by whatever reason, and After Effects cannot open it. But not all is lost. Sometimes if you create a new project and then you import that corrupt file into that project, After Effects will be able to read it, and then you can just save that new project and continue working from there. Okay, let's say we've been in a comp and we've been messing around with some 3D layers and we've been using the different views to make sure they line up. We've been checking. We've been checking the left views and maybe a custom view as well. And then we go back to our regular view, render it out, and our render is not what we expected. Now, this is because I often go back to the front view when I should be going back to the active camera view. The active camera is what renders in your composition even if you don't have a camera added. And the front and the active camera can look very similar in a lot of circumstances. So, so just be warned and look out for that. Now, a fix for a lot of generic issues is to purge your cache. If something isn't working and you don't know why, you've tried everything here and nothing works, you might want to go up to edit, purge, and click all memory and disk cache and hit OK. Now, this may take a little while, but it won't delete anything in your project. It is only deleting temporary files that After Effects uses to preview faster. And you'll probably free up some hard drive space as well for a little while. Now that the cache is purged, After Effects is no longer looking in its memory for what to preview which might have acquired a little bug or a glitch at some point. After Effects is now calculating everything anew, fresh for the first time. So you might fix some errors that way. Essentially, you're turning it off and on again. And I'll also add to this section, restarting After Effects, restarting your computer, and as a last resort, reinstalling After Effects are the next protocols. I've never had to go as far to reinstall After Effects, but if you're convinced what you're experiencing is a software error, that should almost certainly solve it. Now the last unspoken rule, which I speak as often as I can, is to label your layers. It is the ultimate solution for not knowing what is going on inside After Effects. So rename your layers down here in the timeline and use the labels here on the left to change their color as well. This keeps your timeline organized, your project file organized, and will make anyone you work with absolutely love you. It does take some time to do this, but it will save you time and sanity in the long run, I guarantee it. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.